Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Can't wait to get into today's topic, which is how to cut your chances of colon cancer and polyps. Why is this important? Is because most people or most forms of cancer in the colon actually begin as polyps and they eventually lead to about 1 in 23 men developing colon cancer and 1 in 26 women. So very close, it's about 4% of the population. It may not seem like a big number, but think about it. You're in a party, you're in a room with 23 other men or essentially just 25 other individuals. Out of those 25, one, not is just getting cancer, but they're getting colon cancer specifically. Now, when I give you these tips as how to reduce your chances for colon cancer, keep in mind that a lot of this reduces your chances for cancer overall and one out of two people, unfortunately, in our lifetime will get cancer. Cancer. I'll be having uh, most likely Dr. Jimenez on the podcast. Uh, he just spoke at the Reimagined Health Summit, did an amazing talk on natural cancer based therapies and integrative therapies, and really was saying that it's unfortunate, but if we continue to live long enough, uh, from all the environmental issues and much more, it could be that each person, less than one out of two, meaning like more than closer to one to one may get cancer in their life, which is awful to think about. I mean, it really is. And these diseases did not exist more than a hundred years ago. It was very rare. And so what we've done to the environment, to the food, to the air, and to the water uh, is horrible, not only for us, but our children as well. So I for sure am dedicated, and I know many of you are, to just making this world a cleaner and better place to live. So emotionally, spiritually, and physically as well. We need to clean up this world that we do live in to the best of our ability and, and clean up our polluted bodies at the same time. All right, but let's start to go over these statistics uh, because many people, and I'll give you some of the, the uh, how to run these tests at the end, will find that about 25 to 30%, so about one out of three uh, of all adults over 50 will have some type of polyp in their colon or in their intestines in this in their lifetime. So that's, you know, what, about one out of four individuals so quite a large amount. Now, obviously, not all of those lead to cancer, but you should be aware because they may lead to cancer in the future. So let's talk about all the different factors that you can work on to improve to cut your chances for colon cancer and polyps in the intestines. So first and foremost, it's what goes into those intestines, and that is our diet, right? It's our nutrition, such a huge factor. And Again, contrary to all of the uh, dogma of the day, we need to improve our fiber intake. Fiber is like sweeping the intestines clean. It also, soluble, insoluble, helps to provide a lot of the uh, nutrients, and, and the nutrients isn't the right word, but the uh, well, the fiber, literally the fiber that the microbiome needs in order to feed on and keep itself clean as well in terms of the milieu and what needs to be swept away. So 25 to 30 grams minimum per day. If you're only at 10 grams, don't go to 25 to 30 right away. Just add 20% more and start to increase that a little by little. Most people, I know in our practice and most people for a longevity are looking at 35 grams or more per day from fruits and veggies and legumes and some healthy uh, grains, which for some people might be oats and things like that. Okay, so more fruits and veggies, why? They're anti-inflammatory. So yes, they contain fiber, they contain water, like 90% water for a lot of these, but they also contain the antioxidants, the polyphenols that are anti-inflammatory, so really important. Regardless of how you feel about meat and all of those things, again, like I'm not against meat by, all, by any stretch of the imagination, be careful with processed meat. It, it's been shown now for over 30 years as one of the top 10 carcinogens is processed deli meat. So basically processed meat. We'd be careful of that. Uh, hydrogenated fats is another one. So in general, fried foods. So you're out at a restaurant or you buy something fried, really want to stay away from it. It's not ideal. It's typically inflammatory. Adding nice spices to your meals can be unbelievably helpful, uh, whether it's ginger or curcumin or it's rosemary or it's thyme or it's oregano or it's parsley, cilantro, all of these things can be great as anti-inflammatories and polyphenols as well for the gut too. And the last part is reducing inflammatory 
processed carbohydrates. So if it comes in a, ba a box or a bag, it's suspect. I always say if you can grab it in your hand and crush it and it turns to like dust, like chips, right? Those things can be very inflammatory for the gut. So we're just trying to cut down the inflammatory flowers, the inflammatory chips and all of those different things. And uh, you're going to be a lot better off. Now, again, you don't need to be perfect. I don't know anybody that is perfect. So you don't need to be perfect. Um, what you want to do is work on these to the best of your ability. And then maybe once or twice a week, you have your favorite foods at a meal, not for the full day. All right, the next part is this, is maintaining the healthy weight. Why? By maintaining the healthy weight, you balance inflammation levels to a greater degree. You improve your overall immune system. I mean, there's way more to it than that. But in terms of cancer, balanced inflammation, balanced immune system, balanced blood sugar allows for then less of an environment, right? An internal environment that would enable cancer to grow anywhere in the body, but the colon as well, because a lot of these things can come from foods, okay? Improving your physical activity. This is one that most people don't relate to as an anti-cancer modality, but I've shared it now multiple times, whether it's a brisk walk or whether it's uh, interval-based training and to a lesser degree, but it matters strength training as well. Strength training is going to help to modulate better long-term benefits and then in terms of short term, uh, meaning like on a daily basis, uh, a couple times a week, maybe some interval training, great for the mitochondria, great for balancing inflammation, great for the immune system, no, why not overdone? Uh, but that brisk walk, you know, that walking every single day, seven to 10,000 steps a day, uh, just reduces all cause mortality, helps with inflammation, helps with moving the bowels. All of those things are, are absolutely uh, very important. Okay, next one two things that if you could eliminate two things, that are just as powerful as eliminating processed, uh, essentially processed foods, right? Processed flour, chips, processed meat, anything processed, highly processed foods is eliminating alcohol, unbelievably important, and smoke, quitting smoking. Those two things, you could say, okay, alcohol, I can see how it kind of moves through the gut. Smoking, well, smoking increases inflammation in the body and increases, uh, well, increases essentially mortality, but specifically colon cancer as well. All right, the next one is improving your vitamin D levels. I love people to get healthy sun on a basically daily basis if they can. And if they can't, well, they can certainly use a vitamin D lamp. And if they don't want to use a vitamin D lamp, they can also use supplementation. Most people will need to use a combination, a little outdoor sun and vitamin D supplementation. Anybody above Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, uh, from the months of essentially October through early June, it's most of the year, uh, need vitamin D supplementation. There's really no other way around it. If you figure out another way around it besides a vitamin D lamp um, and you've done your testing, great. We'd love to hear about that. But to my knowledge, there's really only three main ways. You can't get enough vitamin D from food alone. You just You can run your labs. You want to be between a 50 and 70, and it's impossible through food alone. Have never seen it done. All right. Next step is increasing calcium intake. I want to say this with a grain of salt. That means that you also have improved magnesium levels because if you increase calcium without increasing magnesium, there is a possibility that some of that gets stuck in the arteries. And when it gets stuck in the arteries, well, it can lead to hardening of the arteries and atherosclerosis. So um, I like to see calcium at a two to one, a calcium to magnesium, a two to one or a one to one. I absolutely want to get most of the calcium in people's diets through food. And then it can be a little bit of supplementation. Magnesium, most people could uh, certainly use to supplement with a uh, little full spectrum magnesium. And both of these can be actually really helpful for the intestines. Foods that are high in calcium, uh, you can certainly use if you don't find them detrimental for you. Some goat's cheese or sheep's cheese, but other versions are dark leafy greens. Uh, that can be quite helpful. All right, the last one is this, before I give you the screenings, hydration. Keep your body hydrated. Conti by drinking water, you hydrate all the cells in your body, 37 trillion cells in your body, right? But what you also do is it helps to flush waste. I mean, that's such a big part of it, right? Our cells take in nutrients, and give off waste. And so we need to be flushing our body in order to get this out through our urine and secondarily through the colon, right? Through our intestines. And so 
there is no set amount. If you sweat a lot, you need a little bit more. If you don't sweat at all, you don't need as much. If you eat a lot of fruit, you don't need to drink as much water, right? Because the fruit's about 90% water. But most people need about half their body weight in ounces of water per day. So you take your body weight in pounds, divide it in half, then divide that by eight, right? So 160 pounds, divide in half is 80. Divide by eight, which is a glass of water, it's about 10 glasses of water per day. So most people need somewhere between eight and 12 glasses of water per day based on your weight. Okay, so stay hydrated. These aren't necessarily too bad, right? But like, it's just like yesterday's show is, are you doing them? And in terms of the neck pain that I was suffering from, I wasn't doing the right things, even though I knew the right things, right? So there's a difference between knowing and doing, and I need to remind myself oftentimes of that as well, right? Neck pain's now gone, why? following what I learned and implementing it. And with this, you know, have you optimized your calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D? Have you lowered your inflammatory foods? Are you still drinking alcohol more than, let's say, one night per week or one day per week? Are you still smoking? Have you increased your physical activity? So there's so much that goes into this. Have you increased your fiber? These are all really important. All right, so now at least though, how can we do some early testing, right? Because early testing saves lives. So the most common and popular or so is a colonoscopy. Most people after the age of 45, 50, your doctor is typically going to recommend it. There are some potential side effects. Um, it's obviously invasive. Most people don't enjoy doing it. In our practice, we would never talk anyone out of it. It's just their uh, desire to do it or not, or not. Now I can tell you, having a camera uh, move through your rectum and through your colon is an easy way to spot polyps. There is no doubt about that. No doubt about it. I don't necessarily disagree. Uh, but are there other ways? Well, I think everybody should be using a FIT test, which is a fecal immunochemical test that you can do right at home, that you can certainly look at that at any age. We use that as part of High Performance Health. If you don't know what High Performance Health is, you can go to highperformancehealth.org. Uh, you can learn about that, early detection, all of these great things. It's a nice one to run. There are also blood work-based tests. I just talked about that on the last Friday review that you can literally do along with your um, annual blood work. Uh, so those are great. You can do a full body MRI, not as precise in the colon as it is for colonoscopy. However, it can certainly detect um, some larger polyps and or cancerous-based tumors. Uh, so there's a lot that you can do. What I'll probably do on this Friday review is I'll actually give you the full list of colon-based cancer, cancer um, pre-testing. So hopefully before you have cancer, you might find something. Obviously, the very early stages when something can be done about it. Unfortunately, a colleague of mine, a very healthy individual, like a very healthy individual, unfortunately passed away from colon cancer just about a year or just a little over a year ago. And it was, it was awful, awful to see. Uh, late 30s, early 40s, very successful in essentially every measurable way in life and unfortunately passed away from colon cancer. Uh, found it too late. And so early testing just makes such a huge difference. So do as many as you would like. I'm going to give you probably about seven or eight options. And that's kind of a lot to go through in this show, plus all the things that you're doing. So I'll do it this Friday, right? I'll add it to this Friday's show. Today's episode 3204 and Friday's show will be episode 3206. Hopefully this was helpful. Remember, all of this stuff saves lives. It really does. And it's not necessarily complicated to implement but just like I shared yesterday, we just have to start to work it into our schedule and make it happen. So hopefully this was helpful. As always, do share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Today's episode is stephencabral.com slash 3204. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.